Hi designers! In this video I will show you how to draw a face for a fashion illustration, quick tips on the proportion and rendering of the skin, hair and other features. Let's begin with a simple template. I've already removed the side views and reduced the opacity on the middle view. So I'm going to use this reference uh, that I took from the Vogue Runway website from uh, Givenchy Runway um, to refer to it to show how I will start drawing the face and the features. I'm using a pencil of a dark brown color which I use from the face palette uh, and the smallest size of it. So let's begin on the first layer. And to begin, you would have to um, find the eye level. So if we take a look at this distance, it will be in the middle. So you have to divide this length in two. If you measure from the photo, and um, there's a, a small volume of the hair, but if you measure it from the edge of the head, you will find that it is in the middle. It's very easy to remember. And I will as well draw the center line to um, be able to track the symmetry between two halves of the face. We can use it as an underdrawing and then add one more layer on top and just trace the features. So I'm not worried about making some mess, it's just to understand the structure of the face. If we take this distance and divide it by two, this distance, you will see that it will give us the corner of the nose. And if we take this distance and divide it by two, we will have an edge of a lower lip. And every mouth, every uh, person's face, of course, it has different proportions. But if you take a look at the specific photo, you will find th those subtleties that actually make the person uh, unique. So, for example, when I'm drawing the lips, you can see that the, the upper lip forms almost like a triangle. And there's like a small dip in here. So these lines, these shapes, they, they make the person look uh, like the reference, like the photo. And the chin is somewhat more rounded. So looking at the jawline, looking at the chin shape, you can always find these um, angles and these shapes that make the person unique and the nose I will take it higher up just slightly because it's unique to this face that it, this distance is a little more and find the width of the nose and then I will find the eye corners approximately here and when you're drawing the eye it's important to remember that eye is a sphere. If the person is looking up the iris will shift up like on this picture is looking slightly up and the pupil will always be in its center. And then the upper lid will cover the eye following the shape of a sphere. And it will have a thickness, that's why I'm drawing it a little thick. And then the edge of the eye here is a little covered because you can see there's this uh, skin of the eyebrow is covering it. So there's like this movement and it's also unique to every person. So you can take a look at that if you want to get likeness. And 
It's best to draw two eyes at the same time, but you can do as well this. You can duplicate this layer, use scissor, and use a mirror option to copy the eye and place it on the other side. Then I will take a um, eraser to erase everything else on this layer. So then, you, uh, if you feel like, you can as well um, use mirror to do the symmetry of the face. And then we can see the shape of the eyebrow. Uh, when you draw cheekbones, um, they will always follow towards the nose. Something like this. And as you can see, the shape breaks here and here. This is good to understand just when you will start rendering the skin to feel the structure of the face. So in this case, there's hair that falls here. like this and then the ears are already here but if for example, you're drawing somewhere where there's no a template for the ears. You can consider that the line from eyebrows go around the face, little down and from the nose. And this will be the edges of the ear. The neck has a few volumes and one volume up and down just very simply it looks this way there's always um, uh, this place on the neck where the bones the collar bones are attached it's important to draw it and they look like this little bit like a letter S and there's the neck muscle cannot see it here but it's it looks this way and the shoulder so I think this would be enough for the face and now I can analyze um, the face if any proportion look weird odd or out of place and I can see pretty much that the eyes I would take them out slightly a bit so I can use scissors take the eye drawing and move it to the side just a bit and same with this eye okay and i would make a jawline a little more round. And I think I would um, take the nose slightly higher, but I will do that on the uh, one level up, one layer up. So what I will do now is just trace whatever I have. I will take a black color a pencil and draw on top of this so 
So I'm making the nose slightly higher. All right, and now I can add one more layer and start coloring the face. I will take a marker with a light color, maybe this color, and I will fill in the entire area of the face. And then I will be reducing the um, brightness of this color to um, create a shadows on the face. So I want to map all this area. And it's okay to um, have uh, the color go the wrong way sometimes because you can always you know refine it in the later come back with a lighter color and refine those areas so I will find like an intermediate hue to make this transition softer um, working with pencil is also a good idea especially if you don't feel very confident working with marker because it takes some um, practice i guess to get a result that you are looking for so you can as well draw some shadows with a pencil. It's always a good idea to think where the light source comes from. In this case, it's from the top left side. It's actually from multiple sides, but we can definitely see the shadows underneath the face. So we know that the, all the um, bottom parts of the shapes that we're drawing we can basically add the shadows underneath which is like face or the um, the bottom part of the nose or the lower eyelids they have a very distinctive um, shadows And I will use marker to um, draw the hair. I'll pick this color. So the overlapping parts become darker and I will use that to add the shadows. I'm just following the picture and adding the shadows to the same areas. And basically you can see that the all the hair volume is backlit, which means it has like the lightest area uh, all around and then the darkest parts towards the face. And now I will do um, 
Actually, I will add a few colors to the face because it looks very pale. Taking a lip kit and I'll pick a few colors. Perhaps I would use the watercolor brush. Just add some colors to the face. And now I will create one more layer on top of the outline because obviously it's very harsh. To, so to refine this drawing, I will be drawing on top of it with lighter colors and hopefully I will achieve something beautiful in the end. So I need a color for this part and I would look for something to cover this darkness and create the shadow underneath the eye. And then I need a very light color to show the waterline. This line here. And then I will use a color picker and I would take some neutral color like this for the eyes and to try to define better this area. And I would take a color for the eyes. I'll just draw it here. And then I'll take a rather dark color to draw the upper eyelid. And I don't want to stop on the same place for too long, so I will work on the lips getting rid of this black color. I will replace it with this neutral color. They look very big, but that's okay. I will fix it later. So I will take a color straight from here and use it to draw the shadow and reduce the lip size. So now I can as well define some details of the hair. And yeah, it might look like a lengthy process, but I think if you really want to get a realistic drawing, then it's important to get the proportions right and just get the drawing right. And then in the end already you can uh, transition into drawing details and just refining your drawing um, as as long as you want to as, as much to make it look as real as you want but the success of it definitely depends on how much you're actually able to get the drawing right from the beginning and to not like cut corners when it comes to um, drawing the proportions correctly. 
So if you have that, then your drawing definitely will be successful and will look good. So I want to make a nose a little shorter. And then in order to give the hair the highlights that it requires, I'm going to take a lighter colors like these and just suggest some light. And once I have that, I can switch to the pencil and give it some definition you can always use white color to redefine the edges and make them look more natural so basically drawing negative negative way removing of what is unnecessary so there's more things you can do potentially to make it uh, more detailed more realistic etc etc but this is the idea really there is no limit to how much time you want to dedicate uh, to drawing the face and the level of detail that you want to uh, provide in your illustration but the first steps of it like the crucial part of the drawing is um, probably finished and I would say that this is it I hope you enjoyed I really hope you learned something and it will inspire you to create your own illustration thanks for watching and subscribe to this channel